There are so many Muppets out there still trying to claim that internal combustion engine vehicles are cleaner than electric cars. They say one of the reasons is, well, when you power your electric car, it has to use coal, right? It has to use a dirty grid. Well, yeah, things are changing very quickly. Here's more evidence that that is wrong. Hello my friends and welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back everyone else. My friends, my friends, it's such an interesting time to be alive. We're alive at a time when there is a lot of smart people in the world and there are a lot of really exceptionally stupid people. Yeah, a lot of them, I'm sorry, live in America. Now, as you guys know, when I went to America, I loved it. I had the best experience. I've told so many people this. Anyone you talk to who's met me would know if I've talked about my travels, I always say I loved going to America. I loved it. And I, another thing that I say that I haven't told you guys before, by the way, when I say guys, that's a reference to men and women, is that Americans were the friendliest people that I met in the 25 countries that I visited when I rode my bike around the world. They were the friendliest. They helped me out. They did a lot for me. But to be honest, some Americans... They are just an embarrassment and they're claiming that the grid in America is just dirty and EVs are powered by, I don't know, whatever, diesel, whatever floats their boat on that day. But the truth is very different. The truth is 25% of the grid in America is now renewable, 25%. But the real truth is quite different to that. In fact, the real truth is this. 25% of the grid is renewable and clean energy. Sure, that is true. But that figure is changing at an incredible pace, insane pace. Wind farms going up, which are massive, that can power whole cities. And the other thing that you've got to remember is the average, not all, but the average electric vehicle owner in the United States actually has solar panels on their roof as well. In fact, people who own EVs have are much more likely to have solar panels than the rest of America. It's the subgroup with more solar panel installations than any other subgroup. Now it's obvious why those people are getting free energy. But what's not so obvious to all these dimwits in Australia, in America, I know there's a lot of them in the UK as well, I'm sure they're everywhere around the world, is that renewables provided more than 25% of electric generation in the US during the first half of 2022. That information comes from the EIA. Now the EIA, they do all these predictions about what's gonna happen in the future with EVs and renewables and everything else. And Tony Sieber, who I love, and you guys know I love, I've talked about him a lot of times. Tony Sieber says they are idiots. Why? Every prediction they ever made was always wrong. What do I say when it's always wrong? They always predict things are going slower than they will or slower than they are. The EIA always says, yeah, yeah, everything's going really well, it's great, but um, you know, it's gonna increase by 3% next year, and the next year after that, another 0.2%. They're always wrong, because you know what? This is happening at breakneck speed. You know why that is? I made a video why, you should all know why by now. Renewables are cheaper than the cheapest coal. Yep, it's true. Tell your idiot friends. Renewables are cheaper than the cheapest coal. Please, we need to educate these morons. I mean, I know that I know most of them are not going to listen to you, but still try. If they get told by enough people, eventually, eventually their thick skulls will be influenced by their group of peers, which usually these people are most influenced by a group of peers. Statistics and facts are not really very interesting to them. They're more interested by in what their mates say. Their mates said, oh, you should drive a big pickup. Yeah, mate. I'll drive a big pickup then. If you say so, I'll do it. But you know what? Eventually their mates are going to start wising up and telling them, get an EV. Now the latest issue of the EIA's Electric Power Monthly report released yesterday contains data through June 30, 2022. And that shows that in the first half of 2022, renewables, biomass, geothermal, hydropower, wind and solar, including small scale solar, such as rooftop solar, increased their electrical output by 19% compared to the first half of 2021. There's not a lot of year, there's not a lot of years left needed now for the American grid to be clean. I think 
what I've said now, I've said this for about 15 months. When I started this channel, I started saying it. People said I was a moron. They said I was a fruitcake. They still do. You get that on this job? I've got to accept that. They still say I'm crazy when I say the grid in most Western countries will be completely renewable by 2030. I've said that now for 15 months. I'm going to keep saying it until 2030. And if it doesn't happen, then I'm just going to look like a moron. But I believe it will. And one reason is the key reason. Money. Money speaks. You know what? I know you're going to say, oh, yeah, but Sam, what about all the interest groups? And what about blah, 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 what about the lobbying? And eventually, money speaks. We've got eight years for this to happen. Eight years for these idiots who are currently running, you know, fossil fuel generating power stations that are making a loss and that will make greater losses over the next eight years to realize that yes, that yes, 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 renewables are cheaper. In fact, much cheaper. Imagine how much cheaper they'll be in 2030 than they are now. There's a thing called superpower. Google Tony Siva Energy Superpower. You'll see what I'm talking about. On August the 16th, the EIA projected that renewables will provide 22% of a US electrical output in 2022. Uh, and once again, they got it wrong. That projection was surpassed halfway through the year as renewables have already provided 25.23% of total US electrical generation. For the six month period to June 30, electrical generation by wind increased by 25% and provided 11.6% of total electrical generation. Meanwhile, solar sources grew by 27.8% and provided 5% of US electrical output. Just imagine if we covered all of the Arizona desert in solar panels. I reckon we could power all of America just with that. Yeah, I know there's transmission losses, but yeah, you see my point anyway. Ken Bosong, executive director of the Sunday campaign who reviewed the EIA data said, now providing one quarter of the US, in fact, it's more than one quarter of the US's electrical output, it is conceivable that with the incentives provided by the New Inflation Reduction Act, wind, solar, and other renewables will reach the one third point within the next few years and dominate electrical generation thereafter. So this guy is saying that he's making a bold prediction that US renewables will reach 33% within a few years. So we're going to go for 25.4% now. In fact, it's higher than that. It's about 26% based on last month. We're going to go from that to a whole 33% in a few years' time. Now, I don't think that's a particularly bold prediction. I think it's a very understated prediction. I think we're more likely to hit 40% in a few years' time, maybe even higher. However, S&P Global Market Intelligence reported that in the second quarter of 2022, wind developers connected 945 megawatts of new capacity to US grids, a 77% drop from the same quarter in 2021. S&P writes, the decline in additions occurred as the US wind industry was waiting to see if Congress would reinstate production tax credits for new onshore wind farms with wind equipment manufacturers experiencing delays in orders and policy uncertainty, supply chain disruptions and rising prices. So you can see... Joe Manchin's actions to disrupt the Senate have caused enormous damage, enormous damage to the market, and have prevented a huge amount of renewable electricity from being installed over the past six to 12 months. Very disappointing to see what he's done. I think it's a big, a big power grab from him where he's used his, his ego and his power to cause really what is the opposite, the direct opposite of what he claims he's trying to, trying to do, which is make things better, when in fact he just made things worse. However, with the passing of the Inflation Reduction Act last week, that drop is expected to be reversed. Hopefully it is, but I don't think we can make up for the damage that he's caused over the last year. S&P continues. Looking ahead, the US has a strong wind project development pipeline with 73.4 gigawatt hours through 2026, according to market intelligence data. Of that total, 31% is in advanced development or under construction. For 2022, 13 gigawatts is in various stages of development with almost 6.2 gigawatts or 48% under construction and another nearly 1.5 gigawatt or 11% in advanced development. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not really particularly a fan of either political party in the United States. In fact, I think political parties are a problem, not a solution. But that's not really my point here. My point is to tell you this. The new act, yes, a lot of you criticizing it. I understand where you're coming from. I do. I've had a look at it. But ultimately, I think what it's going to result in is the United States grid will go renewable, will be renewable much quicker than it otherwise would have. What does that mean? Your EVs will charge 
using renewable energy all the time. And it won't be long until we get there. My friends, that is the good news. These idiots that are trying to claim that electric cars are dirty and pollute because they use a dirty grid will no longer have that crux to stand on. It will be eviscerated. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.